Hello everyone, this is John with John Monarchic Fine Art, welcoming you to another painting video on this really, really windy Chicago suburban day. Yeah, I'm in uh, the western suburb of Chicago, about 30 miles away, and the windy city extends out. It's a beautiful day, but those winds are a-howling. You might be able to hear them as we uh, do our video today. Okay, so we have a 12 by 16 canvas. It's a oil prime stretch linen. We have our two inch brush and we have our painting medium and we're gonna go with our olive green and Payne's gray. Let's see what lies ahead. Hope everybody had a good weekend. I know I did, a lot of fun. Okay, so what I'm thinking about today, just from looking at that, is that green really looks good. So instead of mountains today, I think we're gonna do a forest. Okay, just gonna just scrub it in. Not really paying attention or caring, other than I want it taller on the outsides than I do on the insides. Ooh, that's actually pretty good right there. And then I'll just get a little bit. I don't want the sky to go that far down. There we go. And say hello to Raphael, my wife's crazy bird. He promised he'd be good while I did the video, but he didn't waste any time now, did he? Okay, now, this is some grass. It's going to go up a little bit. See the way I'm sculpting this? Okay, I just started with that big line right through the middle, and now I sculpted this out of it, and it took, like, what, two minutes? Okay, that's the beauty of using this technique. You don't want to worry about any thick, opaque commitments, any... Uh-oh. Wow. The wind hit really bad. Our power went out for about two seconds there. And my uh, phone where I'm recording this is on battery power, so that's okay, but it was almost in the dark. Okay, so. Go like that. Then we got this nice little area here. Here. And what I think I'm going to do is I'll make our water here. How's that sound? Okay, now today... We're going to try something new. Uh-oh. I feel like a sneeze coming. I have to sneeze really bad during this video. I apologize. And, and ahead of time. Uh, what we're going to do differently. I'm trying cobalt blue out a little bit. I usually use French ultramarine. Cobalt blue kind of intrigues me. It's a different type of blue. As you can see, it's got a nice little watered look to it. Why am I doing this? I don't know. I uh, like the change. I like the look. I like to kind of press it out a little bit and see what I can come up with. Now, this is mixed a little bit with Payne's Gray Mixture and the Olive Green. I'm using the same um, Alka Medium, the Walnut Alka Medium that I've been using together. So a little bit of it's coming in. And that's okay. There's a lot of lush greenery going to be in this painting. So it's going to be in the water anyway. I might make this like a little mini waterfall right here. You know, maybe a little bit of falls here. I want to bring this water down just a little bit more. So far, I like this cobalt blue. It's kind of cool looking. Raffi, how are you? There we go. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Now I'm going to go with more Payne's Gray and Olive Green. And I think what we're going to do... We're just going to enclose everything. So we're going to get rid of the white of the canvas. Going to see where we're at. And then once we get this part done, I'm going to put in the sky. The sky will be our first uh, opaque color. Okay, 
Now, what I'm going to do real lightly is I want to make this a little more seamless. Okay, so I want to blend very lightly the edges of the water with the edges of the ground. And the reason I'm doing this is to get that feel. Do the tap here too. I don't want it to be a distinct hard line. I want it to be nice and smooth. And I want a little bit of that green in this whole area. Okay, so you see the way we have that? Let me see how, oh yeah, that looks, that shows are pretty good. Okay, so we've been doing this for five minutes and 43 seconds, plus my long winded introduction. And look at what we already have, okay? So now, same dirty brush. I know you've heard me mention that many times. And I'm going to just wipe it off, not clean it off. Yeah, I was thinking too, you know, I'm doing videos of stuff I like to do. It's dial, the technique, everything else. Subject matter I like. If there's something you want to see, drop a comment below. Say, hey, John, I want to see this, this, whatever. Um, I don't do a lot other than landscapes. I am learning how to do still life and stuff, but haven't really gotten where I want to be yet. So that's one of the reasons why I stick with landscapes, plus the fact I absolutely love landscapes. They are my favorite to look at and everything else. But anyways, if you want to see something different, if you want to see rocks, if you want to see the Southwest, you know, leave me a comment. Send me a picture of something you'd like to see me paint. You know, if you want to see something in the desert of New Mexico, send it. And I'll check it out a while. I'll analyze the colors, and I'll do that in a video. So if there's, you know, a place you want to see or something that I'm not painting that you'd like to see, a landscape painted, drop a comment and say, hey, how about this? And I will do my best to uh, get it for you. Okay, now. There we go. You've seen this before. Get this off of here so it doesn't fall. I put a little bit of white on just to start with, where I normally don't. I just wanted to get a little bit of an opaque feel to it. Um, I'm not sure why I did that, but it's working out pretty well. And remember, this is our green sky that I've grown to love so much. And if you notice with this cobalt blue, more so than the ultramarine blue, actually, my apologies, the French ultramarine, it's really kind of getting that green bluish shade that is making for a real nice sky here. As soon as I blend it out, we'll be able to see. Right now it looks like it's a reflection from something. So, I'm gonna wipe the brush. There we go. Okay, so we'll blend this out and we'll see exactly where we're at as far as the sky, which I'm thinking is really nice. So we'll just start at the top, crisscross strokes. And then go right into the tree line. There you go. There you go. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from right where we began with the uh, real thin mixture, Payne's grain and uh, olive grain, and I'm going to redefine my tree base. Okay. I'm going to put my trees back where I miss them, I'll hit them a little bit with the sky. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sink the same two inch brush. We're going to tap our foliage. If you remember, that's how we got a lot of our nice foliage. We tap that in. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute if you've forgotten. Let's get a little bit lower here. Okay. Go back here. Redefine this. This could be a nice little grass over here. There we go. Okay, so we're all set. So what I'm gonna do, wipe off the brush again. Now, even though we don't clean the brush with the brush cleaner a lot, we do wipe it a lot. That's why it's the cheapest place you can find to get paper towels, the better off you are. Because you go through a ton of them. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna pretend this is the canvas and then I'm just gonna tap like that. Hopefully you can see the way the bristles and this two inch are bending. That's gonna give us our foliage shape. And then we'll put in some lines for trunks and then we'll tap in our deciduous, deciduous, say that fast five times, foliage. And you can put some good pressure down there. You know, you don't have to be delicate with it. You do want them to, you know, show themselves. You want it to cover the sky. Not completely. That's a pretty blue-green sky, so we want to keep that. But as you can see already from what I'm done, it looks like you got layers of a dense forest. And that's what we're going for. Layers of a dense forest. And these could be any type of trees. Could be fir trees, pine trees, deciduous, deciduous, ah, leafy trees. How about that? There we go. Now, the other thing we did too is any thick paint we did have, we got rid of by tapping it in. So we got very normal type of paint. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down further. Kept going up on me. There we go. That was too much. And I wanted this a little more distinct. straight line guy but I want two different levels here let's see how that looks so I want it to look like the force is receding back to the right and that's what we got and then a little bit more right here on the edge now granted when this is framed you're not going to see that edge but until you do it could kind of throw people off and I end up painting the sides anyways. If anybody wants to see how I do that, uh, sometimes I'll paint it one solid color. Sometimes I'll paint it the colors and wrap it around. It really just depends on what I think looks best, mood I'm in, so on. But nothing uh, carved in stone. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to get going on that water a little bit. And water, I was telling my wife the other day, one of the things I love about the water, the way I do it, is it doesn't actually look like water you see. Water, the way I do it, is the way I see it in my head, the way I picture water. One of the things, many things, I've said that I don't know how many times, I love about oil painting, painting in general. You don't have to do anything exact. You know, when we grew up as kids in school and, you know, the 70s and stuff, the sky was blue, water was blue, grass was green, and so on. Even though we know there's variations all over the place in the country and the world. But water's always been blue to me, so that's what I paint. I paint what I like. Okay, so a little bit of white in here. I'm going to blend this white in, too, so I'm going to make it opaque. Like, like I said, I'm going to have a little falls over here, but I want to get, I want to get this going first. I'm going to add more blue in a minute. But I just want to kind of outline the water area with the white. And then this is definitely going to be where it's going to fall. And I'm using the side of the brush now to kind of blend it into the blue that was already there. And then in a moment, I'm going to add a lot more cobalt blue. And then from there, I'll add the water the white for the watermarks. And the reason I'm doing it this way is once I see this opaque area and it's not this real thin color here, it just gives for me, my eyes a little bit better understanding of where the water is, where it looks best and so on. It just, I don't know about a quirk, but it's just, you know, a habit I picked up. It makes it easier for me. Do not be shy with the paint. Oil paints are meant 
to be used liberally. Very thick, very rich, deep, beautiful, vibrant color. I'm leaving some of the white to go through. There we go, nice and smooth. Okay. Now we will go with water lines. And this time I am gonna actually clean my brush because I'm gonna be mixing because I did put a lot of thick blue color down. So I'm gonna be picking up the blue on my brush when I lay in the white water lines. And I want them I want the lines to be a lot more pure as I go down. So I'm washing the brush and then I'm going to clean it with the uh, paper towel a little more frequently while I'm doing this. Right here. Now I got the waterfall in. It's not a big waterfall, but it's enough. I'll show you how we smooth this out. You gotta get right to it. And this up here, this top part, that's going to be my land. I'm going to thin it out a little bit. And I'm probably going to make a little rock ledge here, down, maybe across the whole thing on the bottom part of it. And it'll be land on the top part of it. And that's what's going to be holding our water in. One of the things about water, whether it's a stream, waterfall, whatever have you, um, you've got to have a way for it to be contained. And like right now, it's just, you can go out anywhere. step back and see how that looks okay I can deal with the bottom top see if I can make that a little nicer you're not going to see a lot of that anyways because of the rocks which I'm going to be putting on probably right now let's get the rock color going rock color is going to be brown Hands gray and just a little bit of a losing crimson. Real nice dark color. Probably a little more Payne's gray than anything else. See how I told you it doesn't matter about this top part a little bit? You're going to be seeing some of it, but you're not going to be seeing a lot of it. So I'm just going to make that as a ledge. little bit now what we'll do is we'll use the palette knife to uh, put our highlights on there you see how you got the different sizes here too all over the place that's what you want see how that looks oh yeah much better and while I got dirty on this brush I'll put in fan brush in a second.
and I'll get that in the water smoothed out. But first, we got to wipe off, clean this one. Yeah, I hope everybody's enjoying these videos. I'm not sure how to kind of. I don't know, be more entertaining other than just try to not have a monotone voice and kind of show you exactly what I'm doing. So if you have any suggestions, I have a thick skin, so constructive, constructive criticism is always welcome. There we go. I'm going to put a little more of the water rackets in there. Okay, that'll work. Now with the rocks here, we're gonna have our light coming from the left. So the left side will be little bits of white. Maybe a little, we get a little oak, yellow ochre in there. Maybe I'll try yellow ochre first, see if that shows up enough. Yeah, the yellow ochre by itself will be good. Because it'll mix in. There we go. The tops, you want to try to make a little bit more than the bottoms. Only because the light's going to hit the top more. You can make, take your time and make this a bunch of individual rocks. You can make them part of bigger rocks like I'm doing. And you can really kind of do this part of it however you want. This here, I'm going to just... Because that's really high like that. Trying to keep my shoulder out of the way, but don't always succeed with that. Stand back a little bit and see how that looks. Hey, that looks pretty good, actually. Okay. Now, one more thing. Now let's sculpt the top right up here. Let's get this exactly the way we want it, and we'll start putting in grass. That like that. And then I'll have another one here. And then this. Okay, so... Little olive green, little yum, uh, lemon yellow, Windsor lemon, a little yellow ochre. A little bit more of this. There we 
we go. I don't want it blazing bright here. I'm tapping a little harder just to blend the yellow into underneath. And you see blazing yellow right here. That won't be there. I'm going to be taking that off. The blazing yellow is going to be for the foreground, possibly on this side. But I want it to be a reasonably bright green, but not in your face. So basically what you want to do is just keep tapping it. You see how it's taking that away? And then we're going to put some Payne's Gray in here to kind of use it for lines to separate things. Okay. What do, you, what do I mean by that? Watch. Payne's Gray right now. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do, olive green. Maybe a hair of the lemon yellow. And we'll lift up. And those lines that I just did with that Payne's Gray, that's what I'm touching right now. And then what we'll do is we'll throw in some flowers towards the end. So it's, that looks regimented now, but it won't be once we put the flowers in. Okay, so now. There's not a lot for it to blend into here, but it's got some of the brush. But this is supposed to be brighter anyway. my brush when you do any kind of a painting regardless of your medium it's not imperative that you have every step planned out in your head I don't you see the way I go about it it's kind of haphazard to a degree um, if planning is good for you do it if it's not don't but right now what I'm doing here I'm giving the indication of little leaves and stuff in the in the water. Go right to it. See how you do that? And you got that little subtle land over there with the water. Okay. Now, I do need a little bit more of those water. The other thing too, when you're painting, is you're constantly making adjustments. Just like I've been doing right here. The adjustments don't take long. And there's a chance nobody will notice them except you. That's okay. If you notice them, you take care of it. If you don't notice them, you don't worry about it. Okay, so we got everything situated here. So now we're gonna take care of those trees. So we're gonna take our palette knife I'm going to take some Payne's Gray and Van Dyke Brown, and we're going to just touch. And we're going to make tree trunks. And we're going to make tree trunks go all over the place. Some kind of straight, some nowhere near straight, some crooked, some attached to each other like a V, whatever we decide. A lot of this will be covered, but where it doesn't get covered, obviously there's tree trunks on trees. I, I like doing tree trunks, the small ones like this, with a palette knife, you just get some paint on the edge of the blade, and then you just touch.
And you can use any color you want for these trunks, as long as it's a dark. But uh, I like the Payne's Gray and uh, Van Dyke Brown mixture. I don't know, it just looks like a good tree trunk color to me. Okay, now I'm going to make some little ones here. Because we're going to have bushes and stuff around. It's going to be a lot of foliage around here. As you can tell, I have my windows open and it's 71 degrees. And I always try, even though I have a green studio, to keep ventilation going through my studio at all times. Okay. Here we go. Let's sit back a little bit and look. The only part I don't like that much is here. So I'm just going to And then I'm just going to tap in flowers, wildflowers over there. I'm not too crazy about the way that went. Okay, so next thing I want to do. Take the fan brush. And I'm going to go into my yellow Windsor Lemon, to be exact. And I'm going to start my foliage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use half the brush. And I'm going to tap like this. And I'm going to make... My little canopies, my little stuff. And you want to be relatively thick on the paint. Okay, we're going to blend this in so it's going to be a lot more green later. We're going to add some green to it as we go. But you still want that soft silhouette color. And I'm starting at the tops, the treetops, because that's going to be the brightest. Again, because of the sun, it's going to hit there the strongest. And then I'll work my way down, and it'll be a little darker as I go down. I'll add olive green to it as I go. Like I said, you want to be pretty thick. We're way past the transparent uh, washes stages, if you will, like we were in the beginning. And we're uh, way now into that nice, thick, rich, juicy oil color people love. And yes, it's blending with the brown and the Payne's gray. It's making all kinds of beautiful shapes and colors. And Look at that. Payne's gray, you remember, is a very, very, very dark blue. So when you mix it with yellow, what are you going to get? You're going to get green. There we go. Don't want to go too much. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is see if I got to add the uh, green or if I can just tap that in. And I think those are a little too bright, so I'm going to add just a little bit of green by itself to this. Again, side of the brush. You don't want the whole thing. And you don't want to get rid of all those lights either. You don't want it like it was, but you want lights shining through. Got to give the good effect. If you look at a tree on a sunny day, there's all kinds of light colors going through there. This is a little monotonous, especially on a bigger painting. If we did like an 18 by 24 or something, but taking your time, it's well worth it.
Now let's step back and see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's much better. That is much better. Add a little bit here and there where I think it needs it. And then, by Joe, I think we've got it. Now, wash the brush, clean it and wash it. Never know when you're gonna need it again. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some yellow ochre. And I'm gonna use the same, remember how I used the two inch brush to tap in the original? Well, down here I'm gonna use some yellow ochre. What I want to do, I want another color to break it up. And we're going to go over this in a minute. I'll show you what I mean. You want a variety. Mother Nature is never at a loss for variety. Okay, now these are a lot more subtle than that, but they're needed. Now, let's see how that looks. See, that looks really good. So, what did I do? Okay, for right now, what we have, we have lemon yellow, we have yellow ochre, we have Payne's gray, olive green, Van Dyke brown, all within our foliage itself between what's on the back and what's in the front. If you notice, I've got a lot of the back still shining through. Okay. And the reason I do that is because you just, you don't want it to be like, these are the only trees. You want to see some background here and there. So if you're actually, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but right here, you can see a lot of the background trees that we put in initially with that first, real thin wash. So that's shining through a little bit in places. And then we got this. And then we've got some stuff up here. I'm just going to put a little bit, a few little clouds, nothing major, just a few little clouds. And these are just going to be subtle. Why I'm doing this, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to. Again, it's an oil painting thing. The more you do it, the more you're going to say, you know, I'm not too wild about the way something is. And then you're going to add something, to remove something, whatever. It's hard to explain. It's like, I keep referring to the inner artist is talking to me. Well, if you paint and practice the inner artist, your inner artist will talk to you. Now making sure not to hit the trees. Even though we have green in the sky, these clouds, I don't want to have green in them. But I want to just diffuse the white. There we go. And right now I'm just using this part of the brush because it's such a tight space. There we go. Oh, that's much better. Not too wild about that. So what I'm gonna do with that, is get rid of it. There we go. The beauty is of oil painting. Just go right over with an opaque color. Preferably the opaque color that you used. Okay, so. We are really making good time on this. Okay. So what's left.
There we go. I did not like the way that looked before. That looks much better. Okay. Ooh, that paper towel is done. Okay, so now we will get the bottom going. Bottom is going to be olive green and a little bit of alizarin and crimson and um, yellow ochre. Let's get that real dark in. You can see I'm just scrubbing it in. straight as possible. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm probably done with the big brush. So I'm gonna uh, wipe it and um, clean it while I'm thinking about it, so I don't forget later. It's Sunday, so that's the rest of my chores day around the house too, like my wife. And I always squeeze in the paintings videos in the afternoon, because that's when I make sure I take a couple hour break to make sure I prep okay and get everything ready before. Because I have to prep quite a bit before I even start the video with you guys. I want to make sure I do it as nice as I can and get it to where you guys can enjoy it. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, take my fan brush. Just tap in this stuff. I'm going to tap it in to where you don't see a lot of bright yellow. You see more of a brighter green. And then I'm going to put a bunch of wildflowers. This thing's going to be wildflower heaven. I absolutely love flowers in a painting. A lot of my collectors love the flower that I put in because it just helps bring the painting alive. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, take straight lemon yellow and go up just a little bit. Right up on these rocks. A little bit more realistic when it looks like it's actually got stuff growing up on them. Okay, so. I always like darks with the lights. I always say you can't have one without the other. I'm going to use, and I'm going to go up. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take my real cheap Hobby Lobby 
foliage brush that probably wasn't intended for it. Boy, it sure works. Well, right over the rocks, as you can see, right into the water in some places. Now we did it there. But we're going to do it in some other places too. Wherever you introduce it in one place, you want to do it in another. Needs to lift up a little bit. Okay. I'll wipe this off real good. Don't have to wash it yet. We're going straight into lemon yellow. Windsor lemon to be exact. We're going to get this gorgeous orange color. Okay, now I am going to wash it for the bluebells or blue bonnets. I'm not even sure what in vain they go by. They're blue. Now, I normally use French Ultramarine for these. So this is the first time trying cobalt blue. So let's see if they're any better or any worse. My palette keeps... Oh, I like this. Okay, that is it for the flowers. Now I am going to take my fan brush and wherever I don't have flowers and stuff, I'm going to put a nice grassy pasture. And we're just about done, a few more minutes. And we've got another painting in the books, my friends. And we're all caught up on cleaning our brushes too. the darker so I can show that light. Can't have dark without light and vice versa.
Okay, we are done. We have a painting, my friends. Hope you enjoyed this painting. If you did, please consider subscribing. And then uh, if you do subscribe, hit that, uh, that little notification bell so you know when I upload a video. Uh, as of right now, I've been pretty consistent with every Sunday for the last two, three months now. Um, but I am considering, uh, I got a few things rolling around in my head about adding an extra video a week, maybe on Wednesdays. Um, so make sure you hit that subscribe and notification button. So uh, when I do start the uh, extra video up, you won't miss it. I hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend and a great week uh, at work. And I will talk to everybody later.